No, I am not about to start singing because you don't want to hear it. And no, I'm not using this microphone. <laughs> I just love this setup. This We just had a band here at Octave Studios and they, oh, they were so good. It was, what a treat. I, 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 can I tell you a little something before we go on? One of the joys of Octave Studios is sitting behind the glass in the control room, listening to live music recorded in a way that you rarely get. And I'm looking right at the musicians and they're looking right at me and it's like, what a treat. Oh my gosh, it, it, it's amazing. I love it. Okay, anyway, what <laughs> Brian in Madison, Wisconsin writes to me, Paul, people often talk about diminishing returns in high-end audio, but the definition Seems rather vague. From your perspective, where does that curve really start flattening out? And is it the same for everyone or dependent on room, listening habits, and expectations? Well, that's a tough one, and I'll tell you why. Like anything that I've ever experienced in my life, as you move forward with any kind of endeavor, you get into diminishing returns. So it's, it's kind of like a, uh, what we used to call an uh, asymptotic curve. So when you start out, you got nothing, right? And then you add a stereo system. Well, all of a sudden, you've gone this huge leap from nothing to music in your house. And then you start to listen, you go, the music's not very good. So then you change your speakers. Now you've just taken a huge upgrade. But the difference between nothing and music is this big, the difference between that and a better pair of speakers is that big. And then as you continue adding and changing <clears throat> and rearranging, it goes, it diminishes, right? The, the, it sounds like it's a huge improvement, but really it's a incremental change that you're making. And life seems like that. It, it's learning. I mean, you start out as a knucklehead that can't read. And after, you know, two or three years of a teacher pounding on you, all of a sudden you read, oh, uh, Jane and the cat. And you can read. And then pretty soon you're reading novels. And then your skill gets a little better and you're, you know, you, you get where I'm going. That's a learning curve that always comes up to diminishing returns. And <clears throat> we always wind up getting there. What's fascinating to me is the magnitude of pleasure, enjoyment, discovery. That magnitude for me never changes. The magnitude of change to me is still huge. When we have a new microphone technique, when a new amplifier comes out, I listen to it and my jaw drops like, wow, that was one of the biggest changes I've ever heard. And I've heard hundreds, hundreds over the years. So yes, the law of diminishing returns is true. It happens. But I think you adjust to it and your magnitude of perceived change remains huge. At least mine does. So, hope that makes sense and not too philosophical. <laughs> it is Saturday morning after all. All right. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Bye.